small preserve that's probably 10 minutes from my house. I usually don't go to it that much anymore because I'm always looking for rare species and this place only has common stuff. I did get a diamond back, I don't know, years ago here. Um, but I really don't, don't come here that often. It's a hard place to hurt, got to hike around. But I'm doing it today because the weather's kind of nice, close to my house. Need some exercise, so let me see what I find. So this preserve used to be an old uh, cattle pasture area, and I think this pond was a uh, was dug so the cows could drink water when it filled up. It's a great amphibian pond now. I uh, wish we had salamanders here, but I think it's only got for sure frogs. But these ponds out in the middle of the woods like this are just perfect for amphibian breeding. Especially when they dry up and then fill back up. Perfect. No fish. Just amphibians. Oh. I just spotted something. Nice. Nice corn snakes out on the prow. That looks really cool. Wow. Today's a kind of an overcast day. Temperatures are a lot nicer right now. We've had a couple of cold days. Warmed up a little today. So I was out hiking. Pretty cool. Oh, he sees me. So here's the corn snake up closer. These are these are very common in Florida, and they're beautiful snakes because but because they're so common, they're not that big of a deal, which is amazing, really. Um, I see them all the time, and I know people want to see these, and especially in the northern states, they love them. Um, cool checkerboard pattern on the bottom. I always think it's like a piano keys. Very pretty snakes. They live in these uh, pine forests, but they also live in other habitats in Florida. Like I said, they're very common. They like to eat rodents and birds, small birds and eggs. And these guys will eat frogs and lizards as they grow up. This one here definitely will eat frogs and lizards. They don't get quite as big as the other rat snakes in Florida. But they can kind of reach probably a probably a length of about four or five feet at the most. I think five foot is a pretty good size of individuals here in Florida. Very pretty snakes. So I'll let this guy go and keep moving on. Brown and old. It's an invasive species now that's been here since the probably the 50s. They've established, I don't think they really harmed too much. They have uh, replaced the green and olds, the native green and olds in some places in the suburbs. But a lot of birds, snakes, a lot of animals eat them, so. They're part of the ecosystem now. So today I'm in a uh, scrubby area in South Central Florida. Um, lots of uh, loose soil, 
sandy soils, good for burrowing. There's mole skinks here, neosep, sand skinks, I guess you call them. Worm lizards, could be indigo here. Um, maybe pine snakes, I think some pines have been found around here. Racers, coach whips. So, gonna look around and see what I uh, can find today. So let's get started. This is a blue tail mole skink, which are protected in Florida. Here's a really good example of a blue tail mole skink. Look at the size of it, the tail on that one. These guys are really cool. Bimini blind snake, these are invasive. Everybody thinks they're worms but you can find them in your yard underneath pots and underneath stuff. If you look really close, you can see a tiny little tongue come out sometimes. This is Kogan grass. It's an invasive grass in Florida. And they're trying to get rid of it. So this is a Tantilla, a crown snake. There's a few species in Florida, these throughout the state of secretive snakes that live in well-drained soils, usually in upland areas, definitely not in the wetter areas of Florida habitat. It's uh, little guys, only get to maybe 12 to 15 inches probably as an adult. Yeah, it's 